Hey folks, and welcome back to Glenn and Adrian's Rock Talk. That's Adrian. And there's Glenn. And today we're going to talk to you about a specific instrument that's been around in rock and roll just as long, just about as long as rock and roll's been around. Um, that's about when the instrument was invented. So Adrian, if I were to ask you, what do these bands have in common? Aerosmith, The Beatles, David Bowie, Genesis, King Crimson, The Moody Blues, Porcupine Tree, Rolling Stones, Rush, Tangerine Dream, Traffic, The Zombies, and Yes. First thing that comes to mind is the Mellotron. Exactly correct. <laughs> and we thought, well, you know, it's a pretty interesting instrument. It has uh, added really nice color to a lot of uh, prog rock pieces over time, but also just plain pop songs such as Strawberry Fields Forever. We're going to give a little history on it and uh, go over what exactly it is and how it works. So Adrian, I understand that there was an instrument before the Mellotron called the Chamberlain, which was named after the guy that actually designed this instrument. Yes, the basic design for the Mellotron was invented by Harry Chamberlain. He was just playing his organ one time, his home organ, and he got on a portable tape recorder to record his playing for some friends of his, and then it hit him that you know, if I can record myself playing this instrument, why can't I uh, build a machine that plays plays tapes for for each note and everything? Pretty advanced thought for that time period. He came up with the idea in 1946, but okay. he didn't really flesh it out until um, until much later. Around I think around 1960, he uh, opened a shop in Ontario, California. So he hired a guy named Bill Franson, who was a salesman, to help improve sales of his instrument when he opened the store. There were two problems. Mr. Chamberlain had problems keeping up production of the device with the high sales and demand. Also, yeah, there were a lot of problems with the tape mechanism. And Mr. Franson actually took two of Mr. Chamberlain's latest models to England to find somebody who could invent a solution to these problems. There were problems with the tape heads and all that. They, uh, they, weren't, they weren't all the same. <laughs> probably just putting it together with what he had in his shop, you know, at the yeah. time. Just, <laughs> yeah, so because it it's his prototype, but it probably didn't sound like it was perfected. So that, that was the first order of business was to actually build something that had all the same specs throughout. Yeah, well, standardized parts. Uh, Bradley Brothers were impressed enough with the idea that when Bill Franson asked if they could fix the current bugs in the machine and mass produce it, they enthusiastically said yes. Harry Chamberlain was not happy when he found out about this, about the Bradley Brothers, who uh, the Bradley Brothers believed it was Bill Franson's invention, and they had no clue they were in infringing on Mr. Oh. Chamberlain intellectual rights. He went to England to confront them, even, and then eventually in 1966, Mr. Chamberlain would sell the technology to the Bradley brothers, and he would go on to continue working on this invention and produce the Chamberlain M series in the 1970s. Eventually, the Chamberlain sounds were bought by Mellotronics and are available in the Mellotron catalog. I saw a clip, actually, of uh, Harry Chamberlain's son at a NAM conference, which is the uh, National Association of Music Merchants. But uh, he was there demonstrating, and he mentioned that Leon Russell had purchased one of their biggest ones, an 800 Riviera Chamberlain. And then so I went and looked it up, and it's a very impressive instrument, but only two were ever made. <laughs> so Leon, mm -hmm. Leon bought one, and I guess they, they sold another one. But that was that. You know, as opposed to the Mellotrons, which ended up in every rock band, you know, but they were tough on tour, too. Uh, everybody talks about how temperamental they were on tour, and it was just impossible to keep them in tune and, and happy. And you can see why when you see what the mechanism looks like. I have read that Genesis, early Genesis, back in 1971, actually bought their Mellotron from Robert Fripp of King Crimson. That sounds, yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, Fripp actually right. had two Mellotrons for some reason yep. for the first album, Court of the Crimson King. It would be interesting to me to know if any band has ever uh, especially tried to play live with two Mellotrons. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's hard enough getting one Mellotron <laughs> to play live because it had yeah. a lot of problems. <laughs> That's right. 
Well, here there's a there's I found out this nifty demonstration video from 1965 of uh, someone in Britain um, demonstrating a Mellotron. It was probably the Mellotronics company. Enjoy the music for a minute before we let personality Eric Robinson explain. Look at these posh people. They've got a Mellotron. Yeah. <laughs> we have a Mellotron. Hello there. I suppose you thought you were listening to a long playing record just then. Well, you weren't. You're listening to a new instrument that David Nixon and I have helped develop in this country. It makes the actual sounds of the orchestra. So come over and meet my son-in-law with you. Hold and up. Eric Robinson and David Nixon. Eric Robinson was a band leader who okay. was involved in the uh, Mellotronics. Okay. And That's who it is then. David Nixon, David Nixon, I think they said he was a musician, a magician or something, actually. Yeah. He's a <laughs> Okay, very good. All right, so he is a representative of the Mellotronics Company. The Mellotron. David, <laughs> tell me, every time I come to your house, you're always playing this instrument. Well, I'm a frustrated musician, Eric. I need this, you see. I can, I've never been able to play the piano. Sorry for you, you've got an orchestra. Well, explain how it works, will you? Well, actually, it's... Fairly straightforward. It's a musical computer, and as you know, Eric, the right hand is lead instruments with a choice of 18 different ones, and the left hand is rhythms in this half and backgrounds in this half, and it's all been fed onto hundreds of tape tracks. All right, well, I suggest that uh, you play a little simple piece. What about it? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> my party piece. <laughs> bye bye blues with two fingers oh. and nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> the octave in the left hand and let's try a, a trombone background. Not a trombone, certainly. Well, that's fine, David, for the quick steps, but what about some of the other rhythms? Here's a French accordion with a Viennese waltz. <laughs> so they're really aiming for the stuffy upper crust here. Yeah. It would appear. Yeah. It reminds me of the uh, home organs that they used to have in the 70s. You know, they, they would, uh, some people would have these, there'd be a rhythm section, well, then there'd be well, chords, and then there'd be keyboard for melodies. But I have a pianist here who can really show you what the Mellotron can do. Jeff Unwin. Saying, here's a real musician. Yes, yes. Very, very interesting. You almost wonder why Genesis bothered writing songs when they could have just used the Mellotron and, you know. <laughs> It'll take five. We've got the rhythm here. <laughs> I remember this early Casio we had back in 1981. You could hold it in your hand. And it had some settings, but they didn't really sound like the real thing. But, I mean, you had the basic idea there. You know, they had rhythms that you could play, uh, yep. some uh, bass notes. Yeah, it was all uh, electronic after this. I mean, uh, I guess yeah. uh, Mr. Chamberlain's son said that the other companies were unable to uh, make an exact 
replica of what they were doing. I don't know if that was patent related or what, but uh, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I said they were always electronically made. It is supposed to uh, represent the actual playing of a real instrument, not synthetic, not circular tape. It's a what they call a return system, which brings it back down. Uh, and during 1960s, they found out, or I should say some of the organ companies found out when we came over to the NAM show in Chicago, found out that uh, we could probably do it just as good, but they couldn't copy what we had, so they had to do it electronically. So anything that has to do with drum rhythms or, or uh, uh, musical instruments of any sort, is, they have to kind of get as close as they can to make it sounds right. Chamberlain is really the first, the world's first sampler. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty cool. That's a good claim to fame. But there's so many songs that use the Mellotron. The first time I remember any mention of the Mellotron was when I checked out the album In the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. I didn't know what one was for a while. I remember wondering why it was. All I heard when I listened to the record were the standard instruments, drums, bass, guitar, some extra like sax, vibes, other keyboard instruments, and some strings that sound weird. Now, I assumed it was a string section played through effects or maybe a keyboard string ensemble. I had to be told that the strings were actually this thing called the Mellotron. And because it has all these tapes and something like 35 keys and tape playing mechanisms, the thing weighs a ton. I read about a miniature version of the Mellotron going for, you know, going around like 122 pounds or something like that, you know, weighing that much. Yeah, the thing sounds cool. Regardless of the authenticity of the sounds, it does not play like the real thing, like the real instruments and cannot because it's just a different action involved. It's kind of like playing keyboards, except each time you hit a key, you're actually playing a press button on the uh, on a tape machine. <laughs> I'd uh, rather have a Mellotron sound on my own recordings as well than the real instruments. And uh, here's where the Nord comes in. I've gotten a keyboard that can sound somewhat like a Mellotron yeah. with a sample library and an amp modeler. And a pretty convincing sound, or at least, you know, I'm satisfied with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, they sampled, uh, just like they did for other instruments. Uh, yeah. So you get a beautiful sounding Mellotron now, and you never have to worry about it going out of tune, or the tapes, you know, in the humidity or heat or whatever. Right. Not only the Nord, I mean, a lot of the software, the recording software programs now, you know, have yeah. uh, some Mellotrons built into them. So you don't even have to look for a keyboard that sounds like a Mellotron. You can just pick up a regular you know, keyboard, like, you know, you got an M Audio or something. Yeah, you know? I'm using Logic Good. Pro and it's in there as a, as a yeah. package. So. Same here. Well, yeah. So overall, we give the Mellotron a thumbs up for the sounds. And uh, thumbs sideways, <laughs> I guess, for the price, the inconvenience factor, um, the fact the difficulty that, in operating it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, why not just get a B3 organ? You know, <laughs> it's like yeah. just as heavy and it'll probably work better. In, you know, yeah. so anyway, um, but fantastic instrument. We're glad it came along. We're, we're glad Mr. Right. Chamberlain thought it up. I'm sure people out there are aware of the Mellotron. But if you have a favorite song that uses a Mellotron, uh, leave it down below. We'd like to hear about it. And if you've ever seen one in concert, tell us about that, too. We'd love to hear oh, about yeah. that. There's a special event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's somebody doing it. Maybe, you know, some yeah. vintage fan, you know, <laughs> who tours. Mm -hmm. So if you liked this video, please give us a like. If you'd like to hear more, please subscribe. Uh, we do this all the time. Sit around and talk about things that had to do with music or, or what have you. And... Uh, have a great time doing it. We'd love to have you there with us. So with that, we'll leave you thinking about Mellotrons, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, take care, folks. All right, see you guys later.